Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois, along with Jim Balt, Instructional Design Specialist, and we're going to discuss fall oats, an alternative forage option. The overview of this presentation will include the growing and feeding of fall cereal grain that can be a viable forage resource. Under drought conditions, certainly fall oats can be an emergency forage crop for dairy cattle and beef cattle, actually. And finally, we'll provide some guidelines on growing and harvesting oat silage in this presentation. A key factor is timing, and you'll see a bit later the timelines here, but you have to be sure you plant it on time. Certainly in Illinois, with our drought conditions now, uh, August is going to be a key factor in time. There are different ratings on oats. Uh, we have cereal oats or, or grain oats. We have early season, mid-season, late season. And then we also have forage oats out there as well. So certainly be aware there are different types of cultivars that you can plant. So one question is when should we plant fall oats? If we are in the mid to late July range, Wisconsin researchers suggest using the forage type cultivar. An example would be forage plus oats. However, if you're planting later, Probably in late August or, or early September, we'll show you some maps in a few minutes to determine that, you may want to consider an earlier maturing grain-type cultivar. Of course, there's lots of questions and risks with fall oats. Let's list some of the key ones. First of all, be well aware there could be a potential for herbicide carryover. You'll have to talk to your chemical dealers to make sure that your oat, wheat, or whatever product you're using will not be impacted with carryover. Second, be sure there's oat seed available. Depending on growing seasons and drought conditions, there could be a high demand for cereal grains to plant. Here comes the big question. Will you have enough rain and soil moisture to grow the crop? That's where you roll the dice. And then another factor is a growing season. How soon could you expect an early frost or freeze, and will you have adequate time to get adequate tonnage from your crop? Here is a review of typical moistures in Illinois. You can see when we get in the August, September, October window, we should have enough moisture on a normal year to grow a good cereal grain, or in this case, an oat crop. The next question in Illinois would be, when might we expect a low temperature? You can see this data from the Illinois uh, Water Survey uh, that certainly uh, as we move down the state, you have extended growing season. Another question to roll the dice. When will you get a hard enough freeze that would stop the growth of your cereal grain? And that's going to be another challenge you'll have to consider when looking at this crop. Here is a review of typical moistures in Illinois. You can see when we get in the August, September, October window, we should have enough moisture on a normal year to grow a good cereal grain, or in this case, an oat crop. The next question in Illinois would be, when might we expect a low temperature? You can see this data from the Illinois uh, Water Survey uh, that certainly uh, as we move down the state, you have extended growing season. Another question to roll the dice. When will you get a hard enough freeze that would stop the growth of your cereal grain? And that's going to be another challenge you'll have to consider when looking at this crop. This map looks at other regions in the United States. So you can even see, just looking at Illinois, we have different timelines. So if you're in the Rockford or the northern edge, you will need to plant earlier than if you're in southern Illinois. Our agronomists indicate September 1st, we could still plant oats in central and southern Illinois and expect an adequate crop. Let's look at a couple different cultivars. Again, this Wisconsin data. All these white slides are from Wisconsin. We want to recognize certainly their research and their, their researchers as well. You can see uh, planting times here. We go from the uh, earliest cultivars, which would be Ogle, to actually the forage type, which is in the, the white box. So you can see differences here. As we go across, two things should jump out at you. First of all, as we get into early November, we get a fairly good yield. We can be approaching two and a half tons of dry matter per acre. However, you can see that in this case, the earliest variety has the most tonnage under this growing scenario. Wisconsin then also looked at this same approach, but looking at a July 15th and August 1st planting. And of course, now you can see just the reverse. You can see that the later seasons and the forage cultivars win in terms of yield per acre here. Some of you may wonder, well, why are we talking about oats? Why not wheat, triticale, barley type uh, crops? And this data, again from Wisconsin, simply shows that in this fall harvesting scenario, oats did a much better job in terms of yield per acre compared to winter wheat. 
Another concern is harvesting and moisture content. Again, you can see that this crop is going to be very wet, especially when it's an early vegetative phase. If we put the red line in, which the Wisconsin people did, saying it should be over 30% dry matter, you can see under their conditions, we need to almost be into early November before the crop will be adequate in dry matter so you could direct chop it. So therefore, if your crop is that wet, you may want to consider uh, swatting it and, and giving it a day to uh, lose some of the moisture so we get a better fermentation to occur in this grass type silage fermentation. Again, here is their data showing the NDF, neutral detergent fiber content. And again, you can see it's a fairly high fiber content. The good news though, it is very fairly digestible. So it's a fairly digestible fiber, much like some of our draw stress corn silages are going to be. And of course, it's high in sugar. Their data indicates sugar contents as high as 10 or 15%. And again, that's another interesting avenue for our dairy cows. This data to coming from NRC 2001, looking at fiber comparisons of these different types of cereal grains, oat, barley, triticale, and wheat. Bottom line, they're very similar. So the real driving factor is going to be growing conditions and yield you're going to get. The composition does not change all that much. Jim also then went in and looked at these, looking at such things as protein and TDN or energy. And again, you can see remarkable similar levels except for corn silage. So if we're replacing corn silage, it's kind of a distant second coming in here. As you can see, we don't have near the energy content uh, that we'd like to have here, but certainly much a higher fiber and protein contents compared to corn silage. So what's our take home messages as we wind up uh, this discussion? Wisconsin researchers suggest seeding about three bushels per acre in a good seed bed. Obviously, we need to have good seed and soil contact and hopefully moisture that will germinate and bring the crop out. Second of all, we probably will want to consider the grain type products, especially uh, an early season type if we're planting late in the growing season, depending on what state you're living in. We'd like to harvest in the boot stage, but again, that'll determine a little bit on growing conditions and when we might expect some severe killing frost. But boot stage will give us the highest quality uh, type product for high producing dairy cows. Notice we mentioned earlier, a pretty good yield of dry matter. Uh, two to three tons per acre could be expected depending on variety and growing conditions and higher levels of sugar may be possible. We also mentioned wilting the silage may be important to get above that magic 30% dry matter window. A baling for hay could be very, very difficult. And as always, we really want to put in a research-based inoculant to improve fermentation because the feed will be cooler. We won't have the hot conditions that we see here in summer and fall when we produce haylages and corn silages. Well, we would certainly welcome you to come and visit our website. Uh, we provide classes in dairy every fall and spring semester. You can visit that at the website located here in yellow. Uh, we also have other materials located on our Illinois Dairy Net website. And again, the uh, location is listed there as well. Well, thanks. Have a great day.